So the Galaxy Z Fold 3 and Z Flip 3 have been announced uh, and they look pretty awesome. I mean, at least that's kind of what Samsung wants you to think. And at the same time as they were announcing these, YouTubers actually were releasing their videos about them as well. I don't actually have one. I haven't touched one, much like some of the bigger YouTubers. But I'm going to give my thoughts about the presentation and maybe give you some, some information that maybe slipped by you and you should know before you pre-order. As a matter of fact, I was able to pre-order one for no money down. That's right. I'm going to get it. I'm going to have it for 21 days and not even have to pay a dime. This is not a scam. This legitimately happened. I, and it's not because I'm a YouTuber. I'm going to tell you how to do it right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listening to, to Travis. What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name is Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. So I'm back in my streaming setup where I do my live streams on Saturday morning and my live streaming podcast, Gadget Cast. Links are in the description below because I want to react to the video itself, the stream, the uh, announcement of these two devices from Samsung. Also, I want to take a look at a couple of videos that have been posted um, with some, you know, first impression videos. And I wanted to kind of give my feedback on those as well. This is just the perfect setup for that. So I figured I'd come back here and do that. Throw this video up for you guys and gals and see what you think. So let's get into it. Let's watch. What Samsung said about these two devices, and by the way, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, my glasses uh, here. I know some of you don't know I wear glasses. These actually have the blue lens filter. Uh, they sponsored a video a while back. I actually love this as a product. They're not sponsoring this video, but if you're interested, link in the description below. Get your own blue lens filter thing so when you're watching the computer, you're not killing your eyes. So right away, we see something that looks exactly like the previous generation as far as the fold and the flip. I mean, they look darn near the same, but sometimes when it ain't broke, don't fix it. Of course, I've had some complaints about the Z Fold 2 being too thick and heavy, and it doesn't look like those things have been addressed, but let's keep watching. We're introducing two new foldables that you will love, starting with Galaxy Z Fold 3. Check out that gorgeous design. Doesn't it look amazing? Darn near exactly the same as the last generation, which again, is not to say anything bad, but I mean, it's, it looks the same. I don't know, what do you want from me? We've learned that Z Fold consumers use their cover screen about as often as they use their main screen. Yeah, when they actually made the screen bigger on the Z Fold 2, I kind of agree, you can use the front uh, display a lot more. I did talk about how it's a little bit more difficult to type, at least for someone with hand sizes like mine, but um, I mean, it was usable for sure. When closed, Z Fold 3 looks and works like a standard smartphone. So you can do all the things you already enjoy like messaging your friend. I mean, yeah, if you got little dainty fingers, you can type real quick like that. I mean, that, let me tell you something. That lady right there, she has some dainty fingers. She typing fast, son. Playing your favorite game on the way to meet them. And by the way, like, when you play a game on a Fold device, you don't play it like this. Like, I understand they're trying to show that you can do it in a compact way, but you, un you unfold that sucker, man. That thing is awesome with full screen when you're playing games. You can glide across your screen as you scroll through with 120 hertz refresh rate. So they brought in 120 hertz to the front screen, which was not the case last year. Um, I don't even know if that's really necessary, but they're saying because the front uh, screen got so much use, they definitely wanted, and it was one of the criticisms of, of two, if you're gonna have it on the inside, why not have it on the outside? When closed, the Galaxy Z Fold 3 gives you the full benefits of a regular smartphone. See, I actually talked about this in my Z Fold 2 review and I disagree with this. Because it's, because it's more narrow, there are certain things that don't work exactly the same as they do on a regular smartphone. Especially, again, if you have hands that are not the size of what they're showing you here. Typing on this thing is a little bit more cramped, and I don't feel like it has enough space to kind of breathe. It's not to say you can't use it. You absolutely can. And to get these quick hits out of the way 100,000%, you absolutely can. But to say that it's basically the same thing as a smartphone, in my, in my mind, is just not right. At 7.6 inches, Z Fold 3's main display delivers a tablet-like experience. And it does, and beautifully. And now you can see here, no punch hole. If any of you have been watching this channel for any length of time, you know I hate punch hole cameras. So to see something like this where it's completely uninterrupted gets me so hyped. This is the device I've been waiting for. It looks great. Uh, let's watch more. It provides you with an uninterrupted viewing experience 
so you can stay fully engaged with your favorite content. Sometimes, your camera's punch hole creates a blind spot on your screen. So, for the Galaxy Z Fold 3, we've changed the pixel array using the minimum amount to increase the viewable area. Introducing the world's very first foldable with an under display camera. Now, I love this for the display technology, but I'm gonna tell you right now, if you've seen any of the samples of devices that have an uninterrupted display with a camera underneath the, uh, the, the screen, I will tell you the camera quality is not good. So don't think you're gonna get the same quality out of that front facing camera, cause you're not. Before, you had to close one chat to open another. Now, it's optimized for the large screen. Like a tablet, see how the chat list pops up on the left and your messages appear on the right. Now, this actually seems like something that should have been done from the get-go. I don't know why this took so long to implement. Um, it, while it's great to see this and you kind of be excited about it, I, it just feels like something that should have always been the case. But I mean, again, it's nice to have. Before, the menu disrupted your view. Now, the menu takes up less room on your screen. So you can take advantage of all that new space. I've been saying for a while now that the Z Fold is a definitely a productivity powerhouse between this and Dex. It is something that anyone who has maybe a small business or is using a phone for work will absolutely love. And it's, it's you know, situations like this that really prove that out. You can unfold a better shopping experience right on the main display. Pull up the brand site and shop easily while still watching YouTube. Yeah, this is one of the powerful portions of the Z Fold. Now you can do a lot of this stuff on regular smartphones as well. By the way, this is not anything new. However, with the screen size, it's a much different experience. In my mind, it's much more immersive and a lot easier for me to use personally. You're in the cab when you get an urgent message from your coworker asking for your help right now. You can open up the file you received directly from the Teams chat and then just drag and drop the Microsoft Office app from your taskbar to open the other file you need. This multi-instant capability makes it effortless to work off two documents. It's easy to copy and paste between your files, move your data, and finish up all your work. I mean, this is literally what I was talking about. This is a productivity powerhouse. If you do work or business on your smartphone, this thing becomes a really high choice of all the options that are out there. So we're teaming up with third-party app services to make your favorite apps easier to use on your foldable. And that's important because one of the things that uh, didn't work so great last time was something like Instagram, which by the way, you don't see here anywhere. It didn't completely fill the screen. You had to do like a good lock to get it to fill. It is interesting that it's still not there as is one of the biggest criticisms, but it is absolutely important to have apps take advantage of this. If they don't take advantage of the screen, the thing is useless. People have come to expect reliable water resistance from their smartphones. So naturally, it was also expected on our fold. But making the fold water resistant wasn't easy. So they finally done it, made the fold and the Z Flip water resistant. This doesn't mean go dunk your phone in the water, but it was always a concern when you had the Z Fold 2 and the Z Fold uh, that water could absolutely damage a very expensive piece of hardware. So it's good they've taken that into consideration. Now that's the vast majority of the, the important things on the Z Fold. Let's look at the Z Flip. But some people want a flexible display that provides a smaller and more compact smartphone. If that's you, we've got you covered. Introducing the Galaxy Z Flip 3. It's our most stylish smartphone yet. Now, this is something I said last year. You notice they're saying stylish and they're kind of in a paisley kind of background and stuff. This is for people who are like trendsetters or like stylish things. It's not really for the tech heads. It's not being marketed to them. Listen to the wording that they're using and sh look at the different uh, use case scenarios they're showing here. Even though the technology is kind of similar with the foldable display, who they're marketing to is completely different. And I've been saying this for a year. We've designed the Galaxy Z Flip 3 to make a statement. It has a sleek body and a compact design when closed, so you can easily fit it inside the back pocket of your jeans. And when it's shut, you'll see we've integrated the cover screen with the front camera, creating a truly seamless look. Once you're ready to flip it open, you have a simply iconic phone to show the world. Listen to those words using iconic and seamless. And like all of these things are for people who are interested in fashion. If you didn't believe me before, you better start believing me now. The Z Flip 3 will match and elevate your style because you can choose how your Z Flip 3 looks and customize it from the inside out.
you can add a personal touch across the cover and main screens. I mean, if that isn't something for someone in the fashion, I don't know what it is. I don't know. None of my tech heads is going to use that as a wallpaper, son. I mean, come on, let's be honest here. Let's get into a little bit more of the functionality and then let's take a look at what some other YouTubers are saying. If you're with lots of friends, you won't have to worry about anyone getting cut out of the frame. In flex mode, your camera will use auto framing to optimize your shot. It can recognize up to four people from up to three and a half meters away in wide angle mode. And when you've got more than five friends in the frame, your Z Flip 3 will automatically shift to an ultra wide angle. So no one's left out. See, this is all for that kind of crowd. You can see that it's not really being aimed at tech-based people who might like it anyway. They have a very distinct market for this. Now, let's go into uh, a couple of YouTubers that are friends of mine, friends of the channel, and see what they think about these devices. I've known Andrew for a couple of years now, and he's really great at what he does, but he actually didn't like the original Z Flip. Um, and he said the same thing I said at the time. I'll let you say it. I'll let him say it in his own words and explain why this one is actually better like a regular smartphone when opened up and this is why I was a hater I admit it you see it seemed to me that the focus on the original Z flip was on the cool factor of folding up the phone but the second you unfolded it it was just a subpar Galaxy S20 when I'm actually using the phone I would rather have the S20 in my hand although this is an S21 the S20 in my hand rather than an unfolded Z flip because at that point, what's the difference? It's no longer folded. You're in candy bar mode, if you will. And the Galaxy S was the better phone. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that cool factor sells, but paying a premium for a phone that didn't bring the same level of power did bother me. However, this year, Samsung didn't skimp in the power area. You get the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 5G system on a chip coupled with eight gigabytes of RAM and either 128 gigs or 256 gigs of storage. And I agree. And at the price point of $1,000, it's actually not a bad option. And I agree with him. Uh, before it was just kind of a cool party trick, but now it's kind of more of a smartphone with some pretty cool features with the right specs. Um, I'm still unsure if it's something that most tech heads would actually like to buy. Leave me a comment below. I'll also leave a link uh, in the description for this video. And one more video from a creator that I just absolutely love to watch. Mr. Mobile Michael Fisher has been a friend of the channel for quite some time, but I've also been a fan of his work for a very long time. I watch every single video he does, and I really respect his opinion on foldables as he absolutely is in love with them. So let's take a look at some of the things he's had to say about the Fold 3 uh, and what he thinks are the pros and cons. Of course, there is one major camera change, and that comes on the Fold 3 but it's cosmetic. In a bid for a more consistent canvas, Samsung has hidden the internal selfie shooter beneath the primary display. I actually don't mind the effect, which isn't as bad as my camera makes it out to be, but Samsung made a big sacrifice on resolution here with only a four megapixel sensor. This is what I was talking about before. Uh, you're kind of trading the quality of the front facing camera for something that um, you know is, is invisible when you're watching video. The company justifies that by saying most Fold owners used the cover camera for selfies and the inner camera more for video calls. But as one of those owners, I can tell you, the inner camera still comes in handy for selfies because, especially in flex mode, that's the only camera you have that can give you a preview of the shot. My initial thought is that this change probably was not a great call. Man, that's really kind of a, a, a shame because I really like the idea of an uninterrupted display. Thankfully, the last update I'm covering today is much more useful. This is the first year in a decade that Samsung isn't releasing a new Galaxy Note. And I've talked about this before. I hate the fact that that's the case, but I've also said since the Fold was announced that that should be the new Galaxy Note. And this year with S Pen support, I'm finally getting my my wishes. So it's passing the torch to the Fold family in the form of the S Pen stylus. Two of them, actually, a $49 Fold edition for the essentials or a $99 Pro model with more advanced Bluetooth enabled features like remote camera shutter. Both pens also have a clever retractable tip to prevent you from damaging the Fold's display by pressing too hard. Sadly, Samsung couldn't find space for a silo in the Fold 3's casing, so if you want to sheathe that smaller S Pen, you'll need to spring for the $79 combo pack that includes a case with a special sleeve. And dang, you know, that's extra money there for you. If you want the, if you want the pen and not lose it, you almost have to buy that. 
And again, the fold uh, folded in is not much smaller. It's about as thick as before, which was one of my major complaints about the three, about the two. We'll have to see how that goes. And by the way, I'll leave a link in the description below for this video. You need to watch it. He did a great job. But at the beginning of this video, I told you I got this phone really for no money for the first 21 days. And if you live in the US, you might be able to take advantage of this as well. When you pre-order the Z Fold 3, you have the opportunity to take advantage of some trade-ins, which is great, which might bring the price down quite a bit if you have a bunch of phones. Although I'll tell you right now, they're not giving a lot of money for trade-ins. It's pretty bad out here if you look at some of the trade-in values, even for iPhones, which usually get a lot of money for trade-ins. There's, there's not a lot to be had here. Having said that, you do have the option to try now and pay later. Uh, this is incredible. You get 21 days to try this thing out. And if you don't like it, return it. Now they're doing some type of thing with, you have to apply for like a loan or something, but it doesn't affect your credit. Anyway, just check it out on samsung.com. You can get this thing with, uh, with no money down. I literally paid no money and I'll have it uh, for 21 days. So if that's something you're interested in, leave a comment below. Let me know if you did that and let me know what you're looking forward to in the Z Fold 3 and the Flip 3. Which one are you gonna buy? Leave me a comment below. And by the way, I actually did, I'm actually doing um, an Amazon renewed series of videos with the Z Fold 2. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Peace and love.